Hello, my name is Rachel and I'm here today to do my TBR for The Reading Rush. The Reading Rush is a readathon held by Ariel and Raylene, so I will link the website down below where you can get badges and stuff and both of their announcement videos if you want to check them out. This readathon runs from the 22nd to the 28th of July, which is around a week, and there are seven prompts to like guide your reading. So I'm here today to show you my TBR and what I picked for the prompts. So the first question is to read a book with purple on the cover. And for this one, I've chosen Men Explain Things to Me and other essays by Rebecca Solnit. So I've never read any Rebecca Solnit before, but this has been on my shelf forever and I've wanted to pick it up. This is like a mini feminism-y type book, but I think it's more like bite size. Um, accessible feminism rather than like heavy academic feminism. So I'm quite excited for this one. I think this is the origins of the term mansplaining as well. If I'm not wrong, I can't remember if that's true or not, so maybe I'm lying, but I think it is. The essays in here are things like Men Explain Things to Me, the title essay. Also things like What Marriage Equality Really Means and Wolf's Darkness, Embracing the Inexplicable, Pandora's Box and the Volunteer Police Force, things like that. And there are seven essays in here, so I'm hoping to read an essay for every day of the readathon. So yeah. I've got that one, I'm quite excited for it. Prompt number two is to read a book in the same spot for the whole time that you are reading that specific book. So you can like leave, you don't have to sit in the same spot for like hours and hours and hours until you finish. You can leave that spot but with like one specific book you read in one specific location every time you read it. So because I've got really into gardening recently, the garden actually looks really nice and I keep going out and reading in it when it's sunny. So I'm hoping because it's like the end of July coming up to August that it will be sunny for some point during that week. So one of the books that I've chosen, I will hopefully be reading outside in my garden. So yeah, that is the spot that I am choosing. Prompt number three is to read a book that you meant to read last year. And for that, I have Night Waking by Sarah Moss. So I read the title zone by Sarah Moss. Did I read it last year? I think I read it the year before last. And I really, really enjoyed it and wanted to pick up some more Sarah Moss. And then I went to a signing that she did and a talk. I bought this book at the signing and was hoping to read it because this is the one of her books that appeals to me the most. So this has a lot to do with feminism, I think, because on the back it says Anna is a historian struggling to write without a room of her own, which if that's not an allusion to Virginia Woolf, I don't know what is. And basically her husband is researching puffins because they're on this like isolated island and she does something to do with the history of like parenting techniques and stuff like that. And when the protagonist's son is outside playing in the garden, he finds a baby skeleton that's clearly been there for a very long time. And then there is an investigation into this skeleton being there. So I've wanted to read this for absolutely ages and this is on my TBR for July anyway so yeah I'm hoping to pick this one up. Prompt number four is to read an author's first book or their debut book and for that I'm going to be picking Nod by Adrian Barnes, another one that's been on my shelf for years and I've really really wanted to read it for ages but it used to really scare me. So in this story one day everyone wakes up and they can't go to sleep anymore and I think there are like one in a thousand people who can still go to sleep and no one else can sleep. It says on the back, after six days of absolute sleep deprivation, psychosis sets in, after four weeks the body will die and so like there's a lot of panic going on in this book about the fact that people can't sleep and on the back it says, Paul, a writer, continues to sleep while his partner Tanya disintegrates before his eyes and the new world swallows the old one whole, which just sounds so, so good and so, so fascinating. Um, the reason that it has taken me so long to read this, there is a reason, is because I studied sleep and sleep disorders and all that sort of stuff when I was in psychology at college and we did about a disorder called fetal familial insomnia and it's basically where people's bodies can't like turn on sleep anymore and when people have had it for around like three or four months they tend to die and I remember that every time I couldn't sleep I would lie in my bed and be like right that's it I've got fatal familial insomnia I'm gonna die this is the end of me <laughs> every single time and I'm making a joke of it now which I can because I'm not scared of it anymore but like I was genuinely terrified of getting fatal familial insomnia all the time so I did give this book a miss for a little while the same with insomnia by Stephen King because I was like I just can't deal with people not being able to sleep yet <laughs> I have too much fear around that topic but 
now I'm okay with it, so it's fine. So I'm gonna hopefully be picking up this book because it does sound absolutely fascinating. Prompt number five is to read a book with a non-human main character, and for that one I'm picking Anya's Ghost by Vera Brosgall. If you've been watching my channel, you will know that I recently read Be Prepared by Vera Brosgall and absolutely loved it. It was so cute and adorable and I seem to not be able to stop talking about it. Now, I have read and used Ghost before, but I absolutely love it and I really, really, really want to reread it just because it's... Vera Brasgill and I love her and I'm in the mood for her at the moment. So this basically follows a little girl who falls down a well and there is a ghost of a little girl in this well that she is talking to and when she gets out of this well the ghost comes with her, follows her around her daily life and yeah that is the basic premise of this book. It's absolutely wonderful and I love it. And yeah, one of the main characters is a ghost, so we've got some non-human stuff going on there. Prompt number six is to pick a book with five or more words in the title, and from that I'm gonna be picking Oranges Are Not The Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. So this is a book that I have on Audible, so I will be listening to this one. And yeah, I've wanted to listen to it for absolutely ages. It is Jeanette Winterson's memoir, I think, of her coming out and realising her sexuality and dealing with her family and their reaction to that. However, I did look at the audiobook and it is six hours long and I listen to my audiobooks on 1.5 speed, so I will probably finish it in about five hours, which at the rate that I'm reading audiobooks at the minute, will not be enough audiobook for me during the week. So question number seven is to read and watch a movie adaptation and for that one I'm also going to be listening to an audiobook and that one is going to be Bridget Jones's Diary. I've only ever watched the films of Bridget Jones's Diary, I've never ever read them and I hear a lot of great things about the first one, like loads and loads of people talk about it and obviously it's Jane Austen July and one of the prompts is to read like a modern adaptation and so I'm really in the mood for reading that one and it was on the overdrive service for the audiobooks from my library so I will be listening to that one as well and then watching I think the second movie because I did watch the first movie earlier this year so I'm hoping to watch The Edge of Reason but I mean they're both Bridget Jones related so it's fine I let myself off. So yeah these are all the books that I'm hoping to read along with the two audiobooks. I think that'll be a good amount to read. I've tried not to pick absolutely huge things just because I'm going on holiday about three days after this readathon finishes and the holiday that we're going on is like a traveling holiday going with the car and stuff so it's going to be a lot of like getting picnic stuff, sorting the house out, sorting out who's going to come and water all my plants and look after them because I'm stressed about that. So yeah, there is going to be a lot going on during this week so that's why I've tried to pick a few small books and some audiobooks to kind of make it a little bit more manageable. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you are taking part in the reading rush, let me know down below what you are planning to read and I will see you in my next video. I have tea and I have books and I can't wave but just imagine that I'm waving. Bye! <laughs>